Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host Mitchell J. Raven and we're going to have another very interesting show today. Today we have Dr. Boswinkel, Johann Boswinkel from Holland, now living in Switzerland, who has developed a very interesting apparatus, vibrational medical apparatus, through which he has been healing people, people have been getting healed throughout the world. He's going to be speaking to us about this technology that he's developed, how it works, what it's been working with and for and uh, what the implications are of having such a thing on the planet at this point in time. So, Johan, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. First of all, your background, if you just give us a little bit of an idea. You are not only a doctorate of, uh, econom in economics, but also a physics, and yes. you're an acupuncturist. That's right. And homeopath. And homeopath. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Hence the use of homeopathy for the... Uh, yeah, I like, to, I like to combine things. Yes. Physics with homeopathy. I mean, homeopathy is really o only physics, because uh, chemistry, it cannot be explained. But physics explains everything. <laughs> well, isn't chemistry also a function of physics? Uh, no. Uh, physics is a, a, a precursor to uh, chemistry, because there's no chemical reaction uh, taking place without first an, an electromagnetic signal. Exactly. That's why I said it's like a subset yeah, I mean, of physics. Yeah, but... Uh, I mean, it has to be an uh, electric charge somewhere. Most uh, uh, chemists don't regard the biochemical... Uh, or no, they don't regard the biophysical uh, part of it. And they try to change chem uh, chemicals with chemicals. Kill the chemical basis. And if they... Uh, change the electrical uh, signal, then the automatically the uh, chemistry would change as well. Indeed, indeed. So it, that it's their limitation, yes. not the limitation of chemistry as such, no, but just no, <laughs> that's right. their perception of it. That's right. So how does this, <coughs> the use of biophysics, relate to what you've developed in this machine? Um, well, in the, uh, in the late 70s, the uh, German physicist uh, Dr. Popp uh, d discovered and proved scientifically that all cells radiate light, absorb light, store light, um, and... As in light from the sun? Uh, yes, but it's very, very weak, very, very weak. You cannot compare it to, to daylight, um, because we needed a uh, photomultiplier uh, sensitive enough to detect a glow worm at seven miles distance to detect the light from the cells and if the light hasn't been pulsating we would not have seen it okay. but so uh, it does it does radiate and it does store but it's a very weak signal it's a very weak signal now why is it so weak was that just the way the human being is developed or I think so uh, I mean, there. Uh, There's there the potential for it to be a strong sig a signal. Yeah, I believe a lot stronger. Uh, if we uh, uh, see the aura of the people, uh, which uh, is at the most <coughs> about uh, 15 feet in the Western world, uh <coughs> they've measured in South America, where it's about 60 feet. So I think the environmental influences uh, have taken its toll. And I imagine that uh, the light from uh, the cells in those people would be a lot stronger oh, okay. than uh, in the Western world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're saying there's a <coughs> significant environmental influence uh, definitely. on the light signals. That's def definitely. Mm -hmm. And the light signals, uh, if a cell is healthy, it radiates uh, coherent light. And the moment it becomes uh, sick, it radiates chaotic light. I mean, that's really the difference between a light bulb and a laser. The cells should radiate like a laser, but very often they are uh, like a light bulb, which sends out uh, slow chaotic light, mm. which cannot be understood by any other cell. Um, there are uh, more than 100,000 impulses of light per second in every cell. And um, we believe, since there are also 100,000 chemical reactions per second per cell, that 
these light impulses regulate and steer the biochemical uh, yeah. reactions. Now, if this light signal is not clear, then the, or garbled or whatever, then the biochemical reactions will be accordingly thrown off. That will be thrown off. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Hmm. Now, are there other scientists who have come up with this interpretation of what's going on? Oh, there are, there are many many scientists uh, uh, have, will have come up Probably. with the main thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but the interesting thing was this that the cells radiate light was already postulated in 1933 by Alexander Gurevich, the Russian scientist. He already postulated it in 1933, and in the 70s the German scientists uh, took up on this. I see. We then had the uh, the ability technologically to prove it. Right, right. See, I, I wonder really that uh, about both the ancient Indians and Chinese mm -hmm. would have said something really similar to this. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, it's still totally unknown. Uh, uh, how did they know where the acupuncture meridians were? Sure. And uh, we have our theories of how they know where they were. Uh, yes, so we have theories, but uh, yeah. I mean, for a long time uh, in the Western world, uh, acupuncture was not accepted at all. Uh, now it's becoming more and more and more accepted. Not only popular, but common. That's right. But I wonder very much um, uh, how much uh, uh, the two French uh, nuclear scientists have contributed to this, uh, because they showed acupuncture uh, meridians on photos in May 1985. Uh, because they uh, injected the endpoints of the meridians with radioactive isotopes mm -hmm. and with a f fast camera uh, they follow it and the photos they were just identical to the Maybe Chinese maps of five year, thousand years ago yeah. I uh, hate to think what happened to the test person <laughs> he needed a lot of acupuncture and that's right <laughs> So, Johan, uh, just to bring this conversation around to this rather exceptional unit called the Health Angel, by the way. Uh, this unit helps to do what? Why uh, would somebody want to use this? Well, it helps uh, uh, bring up the immune system and helps uh, eliminate disturbances okay. uh, which uh, have creeped into the body over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time a disturbance is, uh, uh, is eliminated, the body functions a little bit better. And uh, in time, uh, the, uh, the total immune system functions again. Uh, it's especially true for the uh, hormonal system. And uh, uh, this unit is uh, widely used uh, uh, already in uh, New Zealand, uh, for example, and uh, uh, even by hypnotherapists, <coughs> because the unit relaxes tremendously. Aha, uh -huh. I see. So it helps to create an alpha state? Yes. Among other things. Mm -hmm. How would you describe how it functions? How is it that it functions? You have a probe here, I see, and uh, yes. electrodes. Uh, the probe uh, we use to determine the stress in acupuncture points. Uh, acupuncture points are all related to a uh, meridian, related to an organ. So we can see which organ has stress and which one has not. Um, and uh, we have then uh, two electrodes and a person just holds them while and presses the button and the therapy runs. It runs totally on the body's own light. And uh, <coughs> after they've done that about uh, 10 minutes, and if they measure again, they will see that a lot of the stress has disappeared. And uh, each following time, there's going to be less and less and less stress. Now, you have worked uh, with people suffering from cancer, AIDS, mm -hmm. diabetes, 
mm -hmm. arthritis, yes. osteoporosis. Yeah, I've seen 18,000 patients so far. Uh, there are nothing uh, that I have not seen yet. <laughs> Incredible. And you have had success with everyone, or you've not had success with everyone? Uh, I have not had success with everyone. One, about 90% uh, about of my patients I had success with. Do you find that there are particular kinds of problems that you haven't been able to balance? Um, yes. Uh, or is it just particular people? <coughs> well, one or the other, uh, and the other, I would say. Okay. Uh, particular problems that I, for example, cannot treat is people who have uh, implanted uh, organs. Oh. Uh, they cannot be treated with this unit because this unit raises the immune system so far and then their bodies will reject the organs. Uh, I cannot uh, do such a thing. And people who have, uh, uh, for example, uh, a, a shunt in their brain or... Uh, uh, Rods in their back? No, uh, with metal it's different. Metal has its own particular magnetic field, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as far as that is concerned, this as long as those rods are in their back or uh, their hip or their knee, whatever they have, yes. uh, uh, metal, it disturbs the system continuously, uh -huh. and you cannot uh, neutralize it, and they will get. Uh, I mean, I've had people who had uh, one knee replacement. And the other knee was okay, and about a year later, the, the other knee was as bad as the first knee, and it degenerated very, very fast. If you have metal uh, surfaces, mm -hmm. now if they made this thing of, uh, of plastic or whatever, uh, it would not disturb. Um, then I could I could treat them too, but if they have tiny like uh, an artificial artery or vein or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, with this system, uh, as a result of the treatment, the body suddenly recognizes it as something foreign. And it will encapsulate uh, the tube or vein or whatever. <coughs> and uh, mm. you basically <coughs> get a huge tumor inside the body as a result of, basically as, as of this treatment. So. Uh, those type of people I uh, rather stay away from. Sure. And uh, but a pacemaker or something like that, it, uh, I can treat. That okay. there's, there's no problem in in that. So there really are very few exceptions, but there are some very. There few are some very uh, few uh, <coughs> are exceptions. Yeah, yeah that uh, no. cannot be treated. But other than that, let's take a case of um, leukemia. Yes. Now, leukemia is a very uh, special form of cancer, uh, which, in my experience, is uh, due to uh, what I call uh, uh, well, due to magnetic fields. Uh, these people, their blood spin uh, has been changed, and with blood spin, I mean uh, the electrons in the body, mm -hmm. they also turn around their own axis. And that has turned around. And most people... It's well, inverted. It's inverted. And they, most people get leukemia, uh, but they also get uh, environmental illnesses, mm -hmm. uh, environmental sensitivities. I recently um, had uh, a woman who was, uh, had been wearing a mask for 12 years and uh, uh, sensitive to absolutely everything mm. and I reversed her spin and she was okay immediately mm. she was not sensitive to anything anymore and that was a matter of uh, two minutes and for one minute so <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> she d did not meet uh, the right uh, uh, doctor I suppose <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, who knew about these yeah. uh, these uh, these things? Because um, uh, physics, uh, uh, it's interesting that I mean, I think the word physician comes from physics. 
and uh, the Latin word uh, physica uh, is light is it? and it's uh, uh, light and uh, the uh, uh, chemical reactions as, as a result of light that mm. what was physics was mm. and what that was what is the word physician or, uh, originally means uh, but the medical doctors they have left the light out and they just went on this on on the chemical reactions yeah, yeah. well there are all sorts of economic motives behind uh, that probably <laughs> yes <laughs> mm -mm. That's another story. but I don't know whether those motives uh, existed uh, 200 years ago uh, because already then did the medical profession leave their their, their path mm. yeah well, then all they wanted to do is extinguish homeopathy <laughs> in uh, place for surgery yes. and leeching. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another form of surgery. So yeah, because homeopathy anybody can do. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> sure. And they wanted to play God. So when, when it comes to, uh, have you treated someone with leukemia? I'm just using that as an example. Uh, yes, I have uh, treated uh, people with leukemia. Uh, in a hospital in uh, Rotterdam in Holland mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, six people all with the same type of leukemia mm -hmm. in one room and uh, three of them I treated the other three did not want treatment uh, the three people that were treated are all okay and the three people who did not get treated are all dead Because the uh, the doctors they could they could see the progression uh, of the blood work and everything like that they they, could, they could trace how that many treatments did that require about six about six treatments yes of about ten minutes each or fifteen minutes each yes like mm -hmm. I mean and the blood work indicated um, a removal of the there was no longer any leukemia no that's right and this has been the same with other forms of cancer. Uh, I think so, yes, uh, because uh, uh, the point is, um, I first I always uh, uh, treat the pituitary gland, because in my opinion that's the center of discrimination. The pituitary gland has to discriminate what's good and what's bad for the okay. body. And once you treat the pituitary gland, the body recognizes everything again. I recognize the tumor, I recognize that, and then the body will take action. And I, uh, with the uh, unit, I just support uh, the, body, the body itself. Now, something that you told me in our, uh, another conversation we had was that you felt that people, people's immune system has b have been very compromised through vaccinations. Yes. How does this, uh, could just explain that first of all, and then how does the machine address that? Uh, the vaccinations, uh, especially uh, the anti-tetanus vaccination and polio vaccine, mm -hmm. they, according to my experience, they uh, hinder the body most. The anti-tetanus vaccine uh, works on the parathyroid, which is responsible for the calcium metabolism. And the pituitary gland, uh, where the polio uh, vaccine uh, disturbs, uh, is really the master gland of the body mm -hmm. um, and as I said uh, also the center of discrimination uh, in everybody everybody who I have seen uh, their points uh, the acupuncture points they're greatly stressed and when I did the resonance testing uh, it will always the tetanus and the polio, always those two. Which show up. Which show up. Occasionally uh, smallpox. Um, and I don't know whether that's uh, one of the main effects of the vaccine or a side effect. I have no idea about that. I hope it's just a side effect, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, remains to be seen. Um, this unit. Uh, can you show us how it works? Can you yeah, demonstrate because this unit uh, eliminates uh, those disturbances that uh, are caused uh, by on a cellular level. 
Yes, and it, on, on a physical level. Mm -hmm. um, so if the unit, uh, if people hold these two electrodes, with this electrode, uh, the unit picks up the body's vibrations. And in the unit, they are subsequently uh, split into good ones and bad ones. Now the good ones are then given back to the body mm -hmm. and the bad ones uh, are inverted and inverted also given back to the body and because those mm. inverted signals they meet the disturbing signals they get neutralized mm -hmm. and an organ is then suddenly okay and then uh, the light uh, radiated is coherent again. Okay. So it's a reinforcement of the good, and it's a neutralization of the bad. That's right. So it works on, on both levels. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And then you use the probe yeah, um, in what way? In the, the probe <coughs> is just to assess, is the disturbance gone or not? And you're using acupuncture points on the I use acupuncture, yes. Only those. Mm -hmm. We can use them on the all 2,000 acupuncture points. There's no... Uh, problem with that right. uh, uh, but uh, uh, for my purposes hands and feet uh, are sufficient I see I see hmm and you use homeopathy also as part of what uh, what is the role of homeopathy in the use of the machine well in uh, homeopathy especially the high potencies as you know there is uh, nothing left of the original substance uh, after you uh, well, trace memory y yes there uh, I mean the memory of water has uh, long been uh, discussed um, and uh, I believe it has been uh, proven even certain uh, metals have memory mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> water has a memory too and uh, we have seen on spectrometers uh, that uh, the specter of a particular homeopathic remedy gets stronger and stronger the more it gets uh, diluted. Go and figure. <laughs> what? It's funny. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and even when there is no uh, trace anymore of the original substance, uh, still, it, it still carries on getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It has, it's at its maximum. Uh, I don't know when it's at its maximum. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because we have gone to dilutions of 10 to the power of 1,000 um, and it is still getting stronger and stronger. So, so how then does this interact with... Well, this? if uh, the unit can pick up light. Now everything in this universe radiates light. Mm -hmm. And we take for example uh, this uh, ampule and this ampule, ampule radiates light too. Mm -hmm. And in this light is contained all information of this original product. Mm -hmm. So we put this uh, in this well or this cup and we connect it with the input of the device. Mm -hmm. And then the qualities of this remedy are also transferred into the body. But before we always, uh, before we... Essentially we vibrationally. It's vibrationally, yes. Uh, chemically, there's uh, no, nothing, trace. no trace of going anything into the body, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, often, if I measure the stress on acupuncture points, uh, these remedies, uh, you, you, c you can test uh, for which points they're good uh, mm -hmm. or if they're not, if it's the right remedy or not. Uh, because the body reacts on everything it comes into contact with. And uh, uh, in uh, and with this uh, cup, uh, the body comes into contact with the remedy, and an acupuncture point will indicate immediately whether it likes it or not. If it likes it, the stress is suddenly gone, immediately. And uh, uh, of course, if we don't treat, uh, the stress will come back. Sure, but of course. Uh, now, how many of these units <coughs> do you have in operation right now in the world? You have doctors' offices. And oh yes, in Germany, in Germany, Switzerland, in Germany there are uh, uh, 
more than many types of units. But in Germany alone, there are about 50,000 MDs using this. 50,000? That's right. Wow. wow. And that's How about in the United States? Um, I believe there are about, uh, about 1,000. Isn't that something? From the various manufacturers. So you have re you have received <coughs> feedback from these doctors. They have done oh yes. medical yeah. research that oh corroborates yes. the that's right everything in the value of this. That's right. I mean, even the the most uh, uh, difficult uh, <laughs> uh, uh, doctors in in Europe, uh, especially for allergies and for uh, neurodermatitis, this works wonders. Uh, where nothing works, this one works. It's mm. incredible. I mean, even the, the big clinics and big university hospitals in, in Europe, in uh, Germany, Holland, France, they all use this system. So how can we, if this is the case, and you have this written up? Uh, this that, that, yes, but unfortunately it's all in German. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Well, it's a good thing. It's fortunate that you know English. <laughs> so that's right. Well, that's how I came into <coughs> this uh, because yeah. I translated articles from German physicists uh, uh, for an New Zealand acupuncturist. I translated them into English. That's how I got very interested in this. Yeah. Now, when did you first come up with this? When? How long has this been out there? In, in 1980. <coughs> 19 years. So it's, wow. It's 19 years. Nice. I've been working on it, and many doctors with me. That is fabulous, and 50,000 doctors are using this. That's right. That is fabulous. Well, you're really making a fabulous difference in, uh, in the lives of many people as a result of this. And yeah, I hope so. We thank you for this you <laughs> very much, welcome. you know, and hopefully through this television show and other means mm -hmm. that we will discuss, we will try to get this uh, into greater popularity in doctor's offices, mm -hmm. etc. in right. this country, so mm -hmm. more people can benefit. That's right. You know, I hope so, so too. Keep up the great work. Is there a, a final word you would like to share with our audience before we complete? Well, I hope that uh, uh, the, the American uh, public is as open to it, including the medical doctors, as the Europeans have been. Mm. The Europeans are usually ahead of us in one way or another, uh, certainly medically. Uh, yes, that's you know. certain. <laughs> We were ahead in amusement parks, but they're ahead in everything else. Right. <laughs> Johan, thanks so much for being on You're the welcome. show. You're welcome. It's really a pleasure. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, stay tuned, and uh, join us again next week.